human being in every phase and in every facet of one's life needs to be in a state of precaution so that we don't fall into either of the two extremes to the right or to the left. We see that human being must always keep his mind focused on the path in which he is walking. What serves to be the Know the path that you want to take and take that road. Focus on that which is important. If you focus on anything else in the midst of you walking on that path, potentially you must fall away from that which you are seeking. Today, for instance, if I leave the nature and I get into the car and I begin to drive and go back home, for one moment I lose focus what could potentially happen. At the very least, you lost your destination. You took a wrong turn. You went down the wrong valley. All of a sudden, you no longer are able to reach your destination at the time in which you desire. But on a larger scale, if for one moment in the midst of your driving, you lose focus not only on where you are going, but on the actual act to which you are performing. For example, you're driving it for one second, for one half second, you turn to the side. Or for one half second, you fall asleep. What could potentially happen? Tragedy, which doesn't only inflict your household with the one to us who you might hit when you enter into a car. You might lose your life. You might lose your family's life. You might be the cause of destruction for another family, for a community, and so on and so forth. Only because of a loss of focus for one moment. In terms of religion, in terms of our belief system, our aqidah, it's exactly the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala, the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wa ta'ala, have presented toward us the roadmap towards the Christ. But if for one moment, for one moment, we lose focus on this roadmap, potentially what we have. A disaster which we could never recover. For one moment, you take out your phone, you text while you're driving, you might lose a limb, but you're never going to be able to recover from it again. For one moment, if you lose focus of the instruction, the divine guidance provided for us by the Holy Quran and by the commands of the Ahmed Bayh, and the Muslims of the Quran, we could potentially lose. Also, a tragedy which we could potentially never, ever recover. We see, for instance, that there are those. Present and the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet and Allah, who stood opposing Abi Abdullah, the same Abi Sarah, the Holy Prophet. Many of them, they know that this is the same as the son of Muhammad and the Prophet. They know he is the son of Rasulullah. They know that he is the one in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, 
فقل تعالوا ندعو ابناءنا وابناءكم ونساءنا ونساء انفسنا وانفسكم. They know that on the day of Mubarakah that Rasulullah brought the same to represent them. They know that this is the same to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala space towards the Holy Prophet.
going to use it to preach, for lack of a better word, no. On the day in which the man, the Nabi Ali ibn Hussein is from John, alayhi salatu wa salam, is in the courts of the Nabi ibn Muawiyah. And he asks to come and present that sermon toward the Prophet. What are the words? which the man is to translate to the Prophet and the Nabi Ali ibn Muhammad as the other half of the Nabi He says, O Yazid, permit me so that I am able to climb on top of these pieces of wood. The words he doesn't say. He doesn't just hit on a member just like this. A member which is used to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is used to send salutations upon the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala. Which is used to teach the message of the Quran, the message of the Ahim Bayh. Yet, the Imam al Sajjah, when the Quran looks the word Yazid, he says, Oh Yazid, allow me to recite a sermon on these pieces of wood. He says, This is absolutely useless and worthless. It's not even a piece of wood. And that is precisely what he said before he had to be fixed. Hence, if we are not ready to take precautions, to make sure that we step in the right footsteps or walk in the right footsteps of the footsteps of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and his family, then potentially we can fall to some of that. Then potentially we would be walking in the footsteps of the Hebrew Muhammad. Then potentially we would be walking in the footsteps of Josh. Potentially we will be walking in the footsteps of the opponents of Ali ibn al-Qaeda. Ali ibn al-Qaeda, to write the side of the Quran, Abdullah and Dari, Ja'alana minal mutmasakeen of the walaa'u ta'amir al-Mu'ameen. Ali ibn al-Qaeda said, Oh Allah, all thanks and all praises are due to you, for you gave us the greatest blessing, and you allowed us to know Ali. Oh Allah, all thanks is due to you, which you have allowed us to come to the majlis of Hussein ibn al for if we were not in the Majlis of Ali, if we were not in the Majlis of Hussein, if we were not here of the followers of Ali, perhaps we'd be following Khalid ibn Walid. Perhaps we'd be following the Qadafa, the enemies of Ali ibn Qadafa, and the enemies of Ali ibn Hussein. And it's not just that. So that's not the point. See, has created us with the eye, with this intellect, this greatest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has provided for us, is the need for us to be receptive to what he's teaching. By means of the human intellect, what is known as the eye. We come and we see that many people, they come and they present this question, or they present this doubt. They come forth and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with the eye. He has created us with the intellect. I have the ability to think. I have the ability to rationalize. I have the ability to reflect. I have the ability to contemplate. But why do I need anyone telling me exactly how to live my life and exactly how to practice my religion? We see that the last time of the of the traditions of the Ahmadiyya and the Prophet have presented toward us exactly what is the definition of the intellect in this life. We see that through and by means of this intellect, the human being has the potential, has the ability to ascend a level far higher than the human sense. As we know from that famous narration. Yet at the same time, the one who marginalizes the intellect and allows his desires to overcome, perhaps he is worse than the wild beasts who troll the sense. Given us this intellect. He has given us this ability to think. And he has given us this ability to reflect. But at the same time, the intellect is limited. It can only take us toward a certain life. It can only take us toward a certain destination. And once we've reached that destination, it can't take us anymore. That destination that it can take us toward, according to our teaching, the teachings of the Imams, is the fact that the intellect takes us toward the belief in divine, all-omnipotent, all-merciful, all-just one. 
the intellect leads every human being, no matter whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it. The intellect leads you toward a belief, and the Quran leads you. Leads you to the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by extension, a belief in the divine representatives, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us. At this point, a being needs something else to allow his intellect to take him far out. That is a reflection upon the Quran, upon the creation of the other faith, as the Quran itself is. Follow this point for what it is. Oftentimes we come forward and we take a look in the books of narrations we hear from the number about the importance of reflection, about the importance of contemplation. For instance, that reflecting for one hour is better than worshipping for 60 years. We go ahead and read all these narrations. But what exactly are we to reflect on? What exactly are we to think of? The mention of this intellect takes us toward a certain potential. But the intellect is shackled, and we need to free it, to allow this light. For instance, again, to put it back in perspective, the aqal, the intellect, is like a light. It is a light which shines in our hearts. But that light is limited only toward a particular location. But to allow this light to shine through our heart and through our eyes and through our ears and through our entire existence, we need to constantly be in meditation. Meditation upon what are known is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are known and Allah is a sign of what we do. And what are these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A narration from the Holy Imam Ali ibn Musa Rabbah. He states in the student Kathy, in the chapter of the in the eighth section, he states, Contemplate and speak about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focus on this one. Contemplate and reflect and speak about the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not solely think and reflect and contemplate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has his intellect, like he mentioned, which is limited, and it begins a limited creation, starts to think and starts to contemplate upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only thing that is going to happen for him, according to the narration, is that he's going to fall into a pitfall of confusion and lack of understanding. Firstly, what are these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Firstly, we have what are known as the natural signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reaching the other day. They tell us to contemplate, for instance, on the sun and on the moon and on the stars. Look outside, think about them, reflect upon these great miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are means for us to increase our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase our link with Him and so on. Secondly, we come forth and we see that we have another type of sign. What are these types of signs? These are known as the ayat of the Holy Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every single verse in ayat, ayat, now it's one thing that we mentioned, means a sign. Every single verse in the Quran is a sign. What's the purpose of a sign? When we're driving on the highway, we're driving and we see a sign. And the sign's goal, its responsibility, is to take us to a destination. Every single verse in the Quran, its responsibility is to take us toward our destination, which is to get close to the king of Maharaja, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, in regards to the sign, the greatest creations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the walking signs and the talking signs of the moms of the other faith are the talking signs of Islam. Which is why we see, for instance, in the Qiyara or the Qiyara of the Qiyara, we say, As-salamu alayka, ya ayatullah al-Ulam. Peace be upon you, O greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O ayatullah al-Ulam. The greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the moms of the other faith. 
us with childlike mind and childlike heart so that he does not fall into the wrong footsteps like you mentioned. He has to always be in the state of precaution to make sure that he is aligning himself with every single step taken by the Imam of the Ahmed Faith of the Holy Prophet Allah. In these days, these days of the Qadr, we need to make this Qadr back toward the household of the Holy Prophet and make a promise toward them that we will return back toward your teachings and your teachings only. But during these days, we mentioned yesterday that the Jaras of the Mount of Satan. Are a means to educate, are a means to gain and to increase our knowledge, and to gain and to increase our knowledge because, in reality, true knowledge, the knowledge that comes from the Quran and that comes from the Ahl al Bayt, is something that is challenging, is something extremely, is something that is sacrificial. There was this student who had come toward the holy city of Mecca, the city of Amir al Mu'minin, who desired and behold, to join this line of seminary to become, to study the sciences of the Ahl He enters into the city of Mecca. He enrolls himself in the university of Haifa. And he realizes he does not have enough money, he does not have the resources to prepare himself to take the price of the So what does he do? It's extremely hot for those of you who have been in the world. It's unbearable. He enters in the summertime. It's extremely hot. He cannot figure out what to do. He said it's the only thing where I can do. The only place where I can find a place that I can sleep, that I can rest. So he enters into the city of the Holy Spirit. So if you have a lot of this massive graveyard, you will see that there are thousands upon thousands of people buried in this graveyard. He one day in the middle of the night, he begins to walk and looks for a place to sleep. He said he's too embarrassed to sleep on the street, but at least every year he will find one. But he said that he finds one grave that is dug, but no one has been buried in it. So he goes and lowers himself into the grave, and for several weeks he begins to start to sleep. The people look for his bodies there, and every morning they climb out of the grave and go to a blessed road to Amir al Mu'mineen and pray to it, Amir al Mu'mineen, pray to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali Saran, that he receives some sort of sustenance that we can eat. But he said that one day passed, two days passed, three days passed, and he realized that he not only is not a place to live, he's living in the graveyard, he also runs out of money for food. He said one night he's sleeping in the graveyard. And that night he was extremely depressed. If you look at the struggles of those who desire to study the science of the faith, or in reality, those who try to walk in the footsteps of the Imam of the the mention of the faith. It is something which requires every effort of ours to make sure, even in this part of the world, that we're walking on this path towards success. Walking on this path towards them and not following into the laps of this preacher or that preacher, the preacher the other than the other. He goes towards the grave, uh, he goes towards the grave, he he makes a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can I wake up from it? To present to me some sort of a miracle where you've removed me from all of these trials and tribulations. So I've left my home. I've come to the city of Amir and Mu'min. Help me. But he's done. He's not just sleeping, and all of a sudden, he is woken up to water being poured into his mouth. And he finds it in the mouth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does a miracle to work. He gets up from the grave and he sees that there's a water dripping into the grave. So he, he climbs out of the grave and he begins to chase back where is this water coming from? And what does he find? It is coming from someone who has performed the balsam on the dead body of the relative and the water began to drain from his feet. His fingers. To walk on the path of the truth is to drink too much. He said on another occasion there was once this individual, once this Adam. He wants to teach his son the lesson of walking in the footsteps of the Ahl al Bayt and the Prophet of Allah. He said that I need you to come with me and I want to go and visit my teacher. So 
dollar to sell. But to go with me, you are going to go and make your home lunch. They set up the door and they enter into the home for lunch. And they're sitting in the living room and the food is being served and the boy is observing their food. It's very beautiful. It's a very nice park. There are books everywhere. It's a nice park. It's like showing out nice, uh, you know, uh, pictures and so on and so forth. But in the middle of the room is a table and on that table is an ugly looking pot. A pot, a ball, something. He's looking around and so on and so forth. Then he whispers to himself. Your house is really beautiful. But why in God's name do you have this thing in the middle? It doesn't make any sense. He said, Well, I have done this study in the past. I lived in this one small group of houses. I have absolutely nothing in my house except for this pot. Through this pot, I would come. Through this pot, I would drink water. Through this pot, I would bathe myself. Through this pot, I would, you know, wash myself. Everything would come from this. So I kept it as a reminder to myself of exactly what I had to go through to a death. The legacy of that is very powerful. It's not, it's not, it's not reaching for the truth. It's not reaching for the truth. It's not reaching for the truth. And I, again, advise every one of you, and I advise myself first, but make sure that as we move on in life, right, we take every precaution to be on the side of the truth. Because like we said, throughout history we see the trials and the tribulations of those who desire to become amongst the followers of God. Or how these narrations, how these Hajaras will translate to us, I'm not hopeful. We see that they become some of the most important side. But those who desire to hold the message of the man of Hussein, they were considered enemies of the state. During the times of Brother Abbas, the same exact thing. We have a man by the name of Abdullah, Abdul Abbas of Safar. As the father, the leader of the Abbas, this man would go and would kill the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Shia of Sayyid al Zakar. He would take their blood and mix it in his food. After he would finish his meal, he would say, By God, I've never eaten a more delicious meal than this. The people, the individuals, would constantly make their positions in the community upon repelling the teachings. We find that there are a lot of scholars and scholars of the Ahlul Bayt, those who try to narrate toward us the traditions of the Imam, they would be kicked on the streets and they would be abused in their own homes. Their bookshelves would be thrown on the side. For thousands of years, for hundreds of years, this issue, this circumstance has been set up in the Ahlul Bayt. And now it's important to see that while we in this part of the world, may not necessarily have these type of issues where under we are able to preach openly and so on and so forth. So we have movements from the inside of those who have absolutely no idea about the teaching of the And they still come in the state in the name of progressivism, in the name of liberalism, in the name of all of these other labels they come forth with the state that we need to reform the teaching. Or the teaching that they are being made, they are limited toward a time and a space only during that time, and now we need to project it differently. All time. The moms of the Ahlul Bayt are for every individual, are for every community, and it is us who have marginalized. Unfortunately, we see that these days there is this belief system in regards to spirituality. There is this term that's often being thrown around these days in terms of defining spirituality. Everyone wants to become a more spiritual creation. Plus, we both come forward and you see that we have a movement among some celebrities called Scientology, which is a movement of guys to become religious of themselves. We come forward and we see that everyone is interested in yoga because they want to become more. Spiritual. Everyone is coming with a brand new method in terms of how to get closer to a God who they themselves they want to feel better about themselves. It's important to see that the 
in the school that they can not deny that these things might have some sort of good effect on those who perform these practices. But even in the school that they can not deny, where to we have no better means of reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the Quran and the Sunnah. You want spirituality, you don't need that in the Quran. You want spirituality, you don't need the Quran and the Sunnah to be done. That teaches you everything you need to know about your responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go for instance and read a sahih to set your idea, and not only you will know your responsibilities toward Allah, but you will know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you. In terms of his blessing and his friend, his mitten on the knee, it's not so much as that. We want spirituality, as we mentioned yesterday. Read the Quran and the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah, the Quran and the Sunnah, this most beautiful supplication. It explains to you exactly who is Hussein, who are you, who is Allah, what are your responsibilities to Him. Everything is going to be done by Allah. The same way, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The servant of Sayyidina Baba had put the book for the Kibya, which he recited in front of the tyrant. Put the book of Sayyidina Baba. It's still with the Baha'i of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It explains to us the entire world view, the entire sort of view. In the midst of these words, the Sayyidina Baba Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Do you know what he teaches the people to do? Do you know what he teaches the world? 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 Don't take from anyone other than us, and you will be from us. After prayers in the mosque, the Kufa approaches the narrator. And now he starts to narrate this particular narration. But before I get into the narration, let me just put it in perspective. Who is he? The narrator of the Quran is one of those who know the divine secrets of Allah. Important to see that Kamar ibn Ziyad, the narrator of Allah, Kamar ibn Ziyad, the Sahih. Kamar ibn Ziyad, the narrator of Allah, the Sahih. What is Kamar being narrated? It's the quotation of this narrative and this grandeur toward a companion like Kamar. It tells you exactly who is the status of Allah. That's the explanation. This Kamar ibn Ziyad narrates this particular narrative when we come forth and when we speak. A conversation between personalities like these two, it makes a very important uh, picture that we need to reflect upon these words. And you would believe that it helps to know something that we don't know about. It takes a time that we read the Masjid Quran and the Asad Abba, the evening prayers. Amir al Kibbutz came to work, and he took my hand, and he left the Masjid Kufa, and he began to walk to the midst. He said he began to walk, and at this moment he reached the middle of the desert, and Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam began to explain toward me the importance of seeking knowledge. He began to say that the seekers of knowledge have this reward and they have this reward. And then he began to say that the Adam, the one who seeks knowledge, is greater than the one who seeks love. And so on and so forth. And if you go toward the books of the Hadith, and if you go, for instance, to a Dr. Balaka, you will read exactly what are the merits of knowledge according to Imam Ali, and his father, as he advises. Then he says to Kumar, he says, Ya Kumar, and he begins to utter some very important advices to us. Amongst these advices, he says, Ya Kumar, in the heart of the world of knowledge, the higher of our and I'll show you these parts have the potential to be receptive, to be receptive to our true knowledge, to the knowledge of the Quran, to the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. And the greatest of the hearts is the heart which is most receptive to our knowledge. This heart which has the complete and perfect knowledge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's no fear to recite and to memorize and to reflect upon the Hadith of Allah. How many of us have not to get out on our phones? Everyone. How many of us have said that idea? How many of us have said that idea on our phones? Everyone. How many of us read it? Everyone. In the heart of the world, 
idea of the value of having a power of the heart to man. But surely these hearts are receptive, and the greatest of the hearts are the ones which are most receptive, of course, and the teach the of the king of heaven. And then the nation speaks to the other people, and he lets the other side speak, and then he lets out a sigh of intensity. So many difficult people in life, and he grieves a grief. He makes a moan that Kamal notices itself as if, for instance, the Amir of the Eid was remembering the past of the world. People are free from The first type of people are the Arabs, scholars. The second type of people are those who desire to seek the Arabs. The path of success, the path toward taking you toward perfection, the path of Rasulullah and Muhammad, and yet they take the path of success. And thirdly, the third group of people are those who are wise, the boys of the Arabs, who move wherever. The wind is. They weren't. Because they're not amongst those who are of the Arama, and they're not amongst those who desire to learn from the time of the Arama. The Arama has to be in the Arama himself. And he states again, while sighing, while moaning, he states, Ya Khmer, Ya Khmer, Ya Khmer, Ya Khmer, Ya Khmer, and he points towards heart, in this heart of mine, the king's own. Narrated toward us thousands upon thousands of ahadith. How many of us take knowledge? How many of us make a covenant to go back toward the teaching of Allah? And you read the meaning to the flow and walk in the streets of Kufa and say, Saluni, Saluni, Abila, Abdullah, Saluni, Saluni, Abdullah, 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 Ask me before you lose me. Surely I am more knowledgeable about the heavens. What have we done to seek the mind of the Lord? From the Imam of the Ahadi, the Prophet Salafis, Salafat Ibn Ahadi. Without taking much of your time, we come forth and we see that the Imams of the Ahadi themselves have provided for us knowledge in many different phases and many different contexts. And again, it becomes our responsibility. And we would like to return back to our to seek from them and to seek from them. Oh, first thing to come when we see that the Imams of Ahadi, they were left behind the legacy in terms of the religion of Islam. The Imams of Ahadi told them, taught us how to live every single phase and how to live every single class of our life. They taught us how to get married. They taught us how to be with our friends. They taught us how to sit in a measure. They taught us how to speak toward others. They taught us how to pray and how to fast and so on and so forth. We come forth and we see that the Imams of Ahadi they were presented toward us a worldview in every single phase and in every single facet of our Islam. We go to see, for instance, that it's one of the companions of Imam Saad, Ali Sarati al Sarat, and the Imam Ali Sarat. A man by the name of Muhammad ibn Muslim. Goes toward Imam Asad, or he states, he says, Ma shay of Shajara fi a bandi, Hatta sa'altu Jafar ibn Muhammad, Hatta sa'altu Sitta sa'asha, Al Masada. He says, But nothing came into my heart, nothing came into my mind, no question came to me, except that I immediately and directly went to Imam Asad, until I asked him, I posed toward him, 16,000 questions, and he answered every single one of them. Hajj, the Hajj, the Hajj, the Hajj, 
stuff. It's not like how you're visible. You always need a guy, for instance, to explain to you step by step in case you do this one, if you have a so on and so forth. He says, there are like some of the saga. He said, you're absolutely right. He said, you've been studying that kind of culture for 40 years. In 40 years. So when is it going to finish? When can we move on to the next book? When can we move on to the next chapter? After studying it for 40 years, when people have been performing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're performing the Allah beyond the Holy Kaaba, 2,000 years before the creation of Allah, what's the matter with This bodily creation, far beyond this dunya, is not the matter of Allah because it's the matter of creation. And the same thing when he started, of course, he learned in this hadith of the University of Egypt. He has, according to Shaykh Mahdi, 4,000 close to him. But according to Shaykh Mahdi, has 20,000 of those who actually were attempted to fight. 4,000 of those who were loyal to my father, who were as a Shia. Those who were ready as an absolute performance. Imagine the number of thousands of Shia. 4,000 close to him. I mean, I'm not sure what he's talking about. to be the followers of the Prophet of the Islam, who would claim to be amongst the students of the Prophet of the Islam, who would claim to be amongst the students of the Prophet of the Islam. So the Prophet of the Islam, 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 and states that every single hour over the last 1,400 years is wrong, and I've got it right, all of a sudden, what happens? And then he goes to Mount Sinai. Don't you think that Mount Sinai would have been pretty healthy for you before you just go out and teach him 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 and teach Knowledge presented by the minds of the Africans themselves are knowledge, knowledge in terms of astronomy, knowledge in terms of religion, knowledge in terms of what is known as science. Secondly, we come forth and we see that the minds of the Africans they, they also present toward us a worldview in terms of the natural sciences. So, how do you see that Western Orientalists and academics and scholars they go and they write dissertations and books? about the scientific achievement of an Imam like Jafar ibn Muhammad, of Imam al Ali alayhi salatu salam, of the medicine and the um, approaches to medicine of Imam Ali ibn Muhammad What have we done to write about the economic advancements made by Ali ibn Abi al What have we done to speak about the achievements and the legacy of the Imams of the Ahl al that they have presented? These Imams of the Ahlul Bayt have left behind for us a legacy, have left behind for us scientific achievements in the social sciences, in the natural sciences. What have we done to go back to what they have left behind? And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, in terms of the Arub, in terms of the sciences which the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, Ali Muslim Sarat, have left behind for us are those which we can call spiritual sciences. Those which are known as Aha and Kor and Mahdi's. And I wish you to say, Aha, maybe you don't know. Wadi Yudma, Aha, Aha, Yudma, Wadi Yudma, Aha. All knowledge is contained with the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt. Adi, Kamal, Kamal al Baqar, Ali Salatu wa Salati states, Sharra wa Harra wa Farah tajidani ilmam sabiha, 
إلا شيء أرجى من أن يراه. Go and travel to the east and travel to the west, and you will never find knowledge which is true, which is pure, except the knowledge is found in our hearts. Don't look for any other source except the Lord. You want to go back to what Allah said. You want to fulfill your responsibility toward your religion. He said that this companion we mentioned yesterday, Jabba of the Yazid of the Jew, this great companion, this man who understood the Aslam of the Jabba of the Yazid of Jew, who was able to him in the last the one we mentioned yesterday, who, can, who, who was a receptacle of 90,000 Ahadi, but was not allowed to speak with them in public. Jabra can be the judge of the one sitting in the house, and he can sit in the temple, and he's giving his last word to his congregation. It is said that at this moment, an individual walks in, and he's about to sit down in the class. Jabra can be the judge of the one who is in that class, he's the son of the land of the enemy. Goes in his book and he points to a friend and he says, Don't need any of this. And he said that Java climbs in the book and he goes towards the book and he goes towards the book and he says, My friend, I don't have any of this. He said, I'm talking about the book that you have and so on and so forth. He said, I'm talking about the kind of thing that you are going to do. Where is Java going to be the judge of the book? Where is the book of Sabbath? When was the last time you visited Mount Sinai? He said, unfortunately, it's not really that long. I was so busy with work, I was busy with family, I was feeling well, so on and so forth, and I don't know. But he said that this book of John, the John, he said, he died near the cross. He said, that was the moment. Open them to the house of the Messiah. He says, I went to Mount Messiah without asking exactly what just happened. I went to work and I greeted him, I kissed his hand, I spoke to him about my life, I hope he prayed for me, and so on and so forth. I asked him for some advice, and at this moment, I, I greeted him on the side of the final time and he exited his home. He exited his home and he stood by the door and he looked toward Jabba and he said, Jabba, I said, I'm not We're in Medina. We need to go back to our Kufa. What are we going to do? Jabba, I think he said, Jabba. He said, I'm going to just now. He said, I've heard Jabba say that I got over to God. In order to say Tun, Tun, for the whole thing. He said that Jabba said Ta in Medina and he didn't say Noon when he entered Medina. O my companion, revive our teachings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the one who revives our teachings. Du'a has to revive. Du'a, the man of Allah, for the one who revives the teachings of his book. He said, Ya Nafsu Allah, I came. And how exactly am I to revive the teachings? He said, Ya Rabbi Allah, I came to the Lord of Allah, and the Kalam of Allah. He said, Oh, I'm a scout, I'm a scout. If humanity, they knew the beauty of our words, they would fall in love with us and they would not have loved us. We need our Bible to get into it. We need 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 to get into it. Which 
Deus do Pai do Céu. O Pai de Deus não é ser. Por ele será de um salário. E não pode ser de um salário. 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 And when he begins to tell the man of the thing, Mo'awiyah has passed away, and so on and so forth, and then he says that I've received an order from Mo'awiyah and Hecca, one of the representatives of Ben Hamadiyah, who has told me that you have either two choices. One choice is that you give your pledge of allegiance to the new Lord. Son of this despicable man. Your second choice is that you can't. The man of the same height is not his plan. He added his famous words, looking straight into the eyes of one who is a master, may he now be happy. And he said, I'm going to be happy. Yes, you will be happy. But a man like me will never give allegiance to a man like you. This individual who is a sinister, Monster, this individual who is an alcoholic, and who can do nothing to do with a man like me, a man like the same, will never give allegiance to a man like you. He said to the man of the same, Ali Salat al Salat, he leaves the court of Wadi al Hakka, he goes back towards the house of the Arabs, and he goes back to his house of the Arabs, and he goes straight to the Salat al Salat, and he goes straight to the Salat al Salat, where he meets the people of the Jews. It is said that a man of the same, Ali Salat al Salat, Gathered together all of the close family members and prepared to go to the Kaaba to leave the first life of the Kaaba. The man of the same, Ali Salat al Salam, begins to spend his last farewell to his people in the Kaaba. And my brothers and sisters of the Kaaba, and perhaps for those of you who have been to Hajj, for those of you who have been to Umrah, you know that when you leave the Kaaba to go to a Mecca, it is something to do with church. You go and have to spend your last salutation to come and say, Allah. You have to go and send your last salutation to come to Allah, 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 Allah. And when you go to Mecca, oftentimes, many Muslims, many Hajjahs, they come forward and they say, Oh, we really miss the Medina. We feel that the Medina is different. There's a special, uh, you know, smell of Medina. Everything in Medina is perfect because it is the city of Rasulullah. It is the city of the Ahim Bay. Imagine how it smells for Imam of the Sayyid. It is said that Imam of the Sayyid, Alayhi Salatu was Salam. He goes toward the mosque of Rasulullah. He prays to the Kaaba, and he goes toward the grave of Rasulullah. And he says, "Assalamu alaykum, ya Rasulullah." Ana Hussein bin Ali, Ana Hussein bin Fatima. He begins to introduce himself toward his grandfather. He holds on to the grave of Imam Hussein. He holds on to the grave of the Holy Prophet. He begins to weep and he begins to grieve until he falls unconscious. The narration states. The Imam of the Sayyid Ali Salatu was Salam is unconscious next to the grave of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. When a couple of moments later he sees the Holy Prophet come toward him with his grief, telling him, Oh Allah, I'm the now, oh my beloved Sayyid, do not weep, do not grieve, now is the time for you to go and fulfill your mission. Now is the time for you to go and become a martyr. Now is the time for you to go and fulfill that promise. Narrations tell us that at this moment, Imam al Hussein Ali Salam, he wakes up, he sends his last salutation of honor to grandfather Rasulullah, and then he begins to walk toward the graveyard of the one, one, one story writes that when, the, when Imam al Hussein he leaves his house to go toward the graveyard of Rasulullah, he walks proudly because he is the son of Rasulullah. He is going to visit the grave of his grandfather. He is going to visit the grave of the leader of the religion of Islam. Yet when he turned toward the grave side of Abdullah, he began to walk slowly. He began to walk with a broken heart. Perhaps he was remembering the word of Fatima. Perhaps he was remembering the tragedy of Imam al Hassan. It is said that he goes to a Rabbi. He sends his last salutation upon Imam al Hassan. He goes and he grieves over his mother of fault. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he goes back toward the house of Zainab and they leave Medina. They go toward Mecca during the holy month of Ramadan, the paradigm of Imam al Hussein. 
we reach Mecca. It is said that they remain there until Yom al Tarawiyah, the eighth of the Hajj, when everyone begins to go toward Arafah, when everyone begins to wear their Arafah. One poet he writes that on the day, on the eighth of the Hajj, all of the Hajjads they began to wear their Arafah, preparing to go toward Arafah. But one caravan, the caravan of the same, we began to wear their kafan as they were getting ready to go toward Karbala. It is said that Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, the family of Imam al Hussein, they change their intention. They get on top of their caravan, they get on top of the horses, and they begin to go toward Karbala. They begin to go toward the direction of Kufa. They change their intention for Umrah, and they begin to make that journey. It is said that as they're slowly making that journey, Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, from the salam, is recalling in court at Abdeen, and being reminded of all of that which he has been told by Rasulullah. All of that which has been told by Amir al Khamenei, all of that which has been told by Sayyid al Zahra, all of that which Imam al Hassan foretold him, it is said that at this moment, Imam al Hussein, on that journey, on the way toward Karbala, a messenger comes toward Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein, he alights on his horse, he goes toward the messenger, he says, Oh my brother, what can you do for me? What message do you have for me? He said that at this moment, the messenger went toward Allah al Hassan. And said, Oh, Imam and Hussein, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We have just heard about the martyrdom of Muslim and Munafiyin. It is said that Imam and Hussein says, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Aba Abdullah and Hussein, he goes towards Zainab. He says, Oh, my sister Zainab, tell me which of the caravan of the sons and the daughters of Muslim and Munafiyin. He goes toward the women of Muslim and Munafiyin. He says, Bring toward me Hamid and a three year old daughter of Muslim. He sits on the ground, he takes the daughter, he puts her, he puts her on his lap, and he begins to pat her heart, he begins to embrace her, he begins to kiss her. I mean, this is all I'm I'm all my master, why are you weeping? Why are you doing this to me? What has happened to my father? And it's said that at this moment, to Muhammad Hussein says, oh my daughter, why do you have? It is said that at this moment, Hamid says, oh my God, this is the way that the sons of other father treat orphans, what has happened to my father? Allah, who was there to pat Sakina? Who was there to pat your daughter on the night of your life? Allah, 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 Allah,